What's good, Brow Rangers? Hope you guys are doing amazing, phenomenal, fantastic, and all this good adjectives that mean good things. I didn't say that right, but that's okay. First off, guys, I chose a day that, you know, it's beautiful out. We got blue sky and stuff, but it is windy as crap, and we've got construction across the street, and we got birds chirping, so another great test for the Rode microphone. I promised you all a week-by-week -week update of the recovery with the shoulder after the rotator cuff labrum and partial fracture of the humerus bone I believe and how that's all going so this is the second week after guys a few days ago was the actual week anniversary of the surgery now it's not exactly early right now it is 1055 but I woke up at 8 this morning and just could not go back to sleep I just go back to sleep no problem on days that I give myself to sleep in but the issue today was that I woke up sore I did not sleep well last night but aside from kind of getting back to normal activity guys like walking around the city to go to auditions like I have been doing this week I think the other part of the issue is that I'm not sleeping exactly the proper way they told me to sleep with the sling and with the recovery going on so with that being said let's go talk about how to sleep when you have the sling post surgery for the next few weeks if you guys are in my shoes take it away indoor Jennings so when it comes to sleeping guys, they ask you to try to sleep as much as possible propped up at an angle with your arm in the handy dandy sling. So let's get the sling on real quick. And that's also why I've got all these ridiculous pillows. Because to get comfortable sitting up, you gotta have a billion and five pillows just to even be in one spot. So you're supposed to sleep kind of like this with your head to either side doesn't matter. But your arms gotta be propped up, your shoulders gotta be propped up. If you try this at home, my back's not even like totally supported. I mean, I've got pillows under it, but it's just like a real weird angle. And it's probably not great for your spine. But the way that I prefer to try to sleep is like this. Maybe like two pillows. So that, that way like my arm is still kind of up, but this way I can at least try to sleep maybe on one side. Or if I wanna try to cheat, have my head to the other side, I'll be here and I'll turn my head that way. The issue with that is you wake up during the night and the shoulder's sore, so you're like, you know what, I feel like you need to stretch it out, to let your biceps stretch out, you gotta get out of the sling. I'm like, yo, I just wanna be able to sleep, I'm frustrated, so I typically drop the sling on the ground, stretch out the arm a little bit, you can't really push anywhere, so you have to like pull it out or you have to use your finger to walk. To get out, finger walking is a super important thing, especially if you're hanging out in your bed, guys. Like the first week and a half, you're in bed and you're not wearing the sling at times, you need to wear it all the time. But the times you're not wearing your sling, guys, finger walking, like listen, right now, I can kind of push my arm forward, but it's not easy. So finger walking allows you to pull your arm out, like walk it back. That way you can lift your elbow and like kind of support it. There are times at night where I'm like, you know what, screw it, I'm trying to go back to sleep. I'll leave the sling off, go back here, try to sleep, try to sleep or kind of cheat this way to get my left ear on the pillow because I'm one of those guys that's weird and I like to sleep with my ear on the pillow. But with that being said, sleep has not been great. And I think my weird sleeping positions are probably one of the reasons why I've not been sleeping great and I wake up with my shoulder super sore. So back to you outside Jennings. Indoor Jennings, thank you guys so much. Now let's talk about Monday's meeting with Dr. Yom. The first week meeting after the surgery, everything went really great. They did an x-ray to check the bone out to see how that fractured and again, I believe my humerus is healing. Now, real quick note on that. I thought I was gonna start PT this week, which I mentioned in my last video, but the problem is because that bone fracture still has to heal, I have another three or four weeks before actual physical therapy with an actual physical therapist begins. Right now, I just have some at-home exercises I can do for mobility and stretching the shoulder without doing too, too much. Aside from that, guys, the doctor was amazing. Dr. Yo basically told me that he was able to keep as much of me in my shoulder as possible, meaning he didn't have to put any screws in there. He basically used dissolvable sutures on the inside of the skin and then just used like a skin glue on the top to try to keep that as smooth as possible. All the healing is going really, really well, which is great. Which brings me to my next point, which is that Dr. Yom cleared me to do stationary bike because he doesn't want me to be moving this at all. Even with stationary bike, he wants me to be in my sling walking around, walking to the train station and walking around in the city. He wants me in the sling and sleeping like you guys saw in the video. He wants me in the sling. But one of my problems is figuring out a way to not sweat in the sling. We'll talk about that more later. Now, I believe this dull pain has gotten worse because of more of the daily activities I'm starting to do more and more frequently. You know, making yourself breakfast, walking around. I'm going back to the city for auditions now. During auditions, I'm not wearing the sling. I'm not moving the shoulder at all. 
but I'm kind of cheating with the bicep to move, you know, my forearm. Now, aside from that, guys, I've got a pretty high pain tolerance, and that is from my eighth grade year of rowing crew in high school when I herniated three discs on my lower spine. Of course, and I've kind of had lasting issues with that ever since. So I've got a higher pain tolerance, I believe, than most people. I've gotten to the point now where I usually, if I need to, just take one oxycodone during the daytime, and I will take the two before I go to bed and try to sleep well at night. Now, obviously, the last two nights I've not slept very good, so that plan's not going as smoothly as I've hoped. But during the day, I'm not really taking any pain medicine because I'd rather know what movements hurt the shoulder. But something that the doctor did say is that when physical therapy starts, make sure you have oxycodone on hand because you want to be going into the physical therapy without any pain, meaning taking some oxycodone before the therapy starts so that you can start working on the range of motion and your strength as much as possible without having to battle pain. Next thing on the list, guys, is some advice from me to you if you are anybody that is going through a rotator cuff surgery, a rot... All right, truck. So the next thing on the list is some advice from me to you if you are somebody who's going through a rotator cuff surgery, a labrum surgery, or a fractured humerus and have to be in the sling for a little bit, or all three like myself, the amazing trifecta that I've got going on, is to not be prideful like myself. Take the meds when you need to, guys. If you're not a super active person like I am, and I'm you know, constantly anxious and needing to do something to burn off excess energy, please take the pain meds when you need them. Now guys, in the mornings when I wake up, I typically take my sling off because I've worn it at night, let my bicep stretch out, let my shoulder move a little bit, and I usually get someone to help me put an ice pack on my shoulder while I make breakfast, and I don't wear the sling while I make breakfast and walk around the kitchen. Now guys, do I honestly think you need an ice pack every single week after that surgery? Not necessarily, however, I do believe that first week after surgery is super important to use ice as much as possible to keep the swelling down. After the first week, I'm pretty sure the swelling is going to stay down. Now, if you are active like me, please put on an ice pack after a long day because it will help your shoulder to fight inflammation and swelling. Now, I will say a piece of advice that Dr. Yom gave me that was priceless advice was don't just go switching to ibuprofen, guys. Use the oxycodone. Use what they're prescribing you because ibuprofen is a anti-inflammatory and they don't want you using an anti-inflammatory because the inflammation is is actually what helps your shoulder to heal. It helps the tendon and it helps the muscle to heal. So don't just switch to ibuprofen if you just decide to. Talk to your doctor first before you guys make any kind of switches with medicine because they know what they're talking about and we just gotta sit along for the ride and be patient. Oh, there's so many sounds right now. Now with my advice being checked off the list, guys, here is Indoor Jennings with a couple tips and tricks of how to do some simple daily activities that are a little bit more difficult when you only have one fully functional arm, such as getting dressed and showering. Indoor Jennings, take it away. All right, guys, so welcome back to the inside with Inside Jennings. How to take your shirt off when you can't really raise this arm. You reach back here. Typically, this is the way that I have found is easiest. Maybe other people have found easier ways. But I reach back here, simply just in an ugly way, one motion, pull forward, and bang, your shirt is off. Now, check it out real quick. You've got the one, two, three, four places where they had the incisions. That's where they went in anthroscopically and fix my shoulder. So thank you, Dr. Yom, I really appreciate it. But to put your shirt back on, guys, what you guys do is you start with your left sleeve down. You kind of reach in, because you can kind of move your left arm, you know, you're not totally dead to the world with the arm. Uh, you reach back in, you get your left hand down there, you let it sling down, and this is especially important, guys, like the week immediately after surgery when you really can't move your shoulder a lot. You know, this is the second week, I'm doing better, the pain is not really that bad but still be careful and not try to move your shoulder too much, this is the best way to do it. So left shoulder is in there, arm is totally straight down, pull it over and as you pull over, look for the head hole and then the right arm hole and that's the best way to go. So ready? Look for the left, there's your head. <laughs> it's not a pretty process, but that's the best way I've found to do it without moving that left arm at all. Now guys, to move on to trick number two, your socks. All right, fam, when it comes to putting your socks on with the injured shoulder, best thing to do, now, real quick, I'm not showing you guys how to put on and take off pants or shorts. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can either put your shorts and pants on the ground, step one foot in at a time, and just use that one arm to pull them up. It's self-explanatory, not as hard as putting the t-shirt on. So, moving on to socks, especially long socks. These guys can be a pain in the butt. First thing, let me tell y'all, don't try to use your left arm for this. Just just don't, especially that first week after surgery, you won't be able to. The best way to do this is you start here, right guys? And I'm sorry, my feet aren't beautiful. Whatever it is, what it is, I rock it. Start, usually I try to put my big toe in there first, kind of use that toe to pull and keep that sock there. And then you simply pull the rest of the sock on, 
hopefully with one of these feet you'll be able to see a clear shot of it. And then you just pull the sock on and bang, that's how you put on that one. And I've had some practice guys, it does take a little bit to get used to it. But now we're going to the left foot, same thing guys, now this is tough because this is my right arm, that's good. And now this is my left foot, big toe, into the sock. Use that toe to hold that sock back, stretch the sock over the other toes, and as previously mentioned, pull down and bang. Your socks are on your feet. Now with your socks on guys, let's talk about putting your sling on by yourself. This can be tough the first few times as you gotta figure out where all the components are. Now I'm starting with both the buckles completely off the waist buckle and the over the shoulder buckle completely unattached, not connected in any way. So first off, you gotta get this Velcro guy off. Uh, it can be kind of a pain in the butt, so really try to hold it back right there as you slide your arm in. Put your arm in, grab your little hand, elbow goes in there as far as possible. Pull your Velcro down, bang, first part is done. Now sometimes I will say guys, I will sleep sometimes just like this, just so I can kind of move it with my right arm wherever I want it to. That way it's not like concreted down with my waist strap or you know, really pulling against my neck with the shoulder strap at night. But let's start with the shoulder strap because that's kind of the easiest. Usually I look here and if I don't have a reflective surface like I do on my camera, I just look for the strap and it's really awkward guys, you do have to do a lot of bending and most of the time if you do have people around and they see you trying to reach for it, they'll usually come to your help and, and they can help out so that's nice. But if you're by yourself, you just kind of grab it, pull it over, make sure it's flush with your back, find this clip here, you gotta get kind of dexterous with your hands and then bang, there's your shoulder strap, you're good. They always say to keep your forearm at least parallel to the ground, sometimes a little bit more up like a chicken wing. Now to get your waist attached, now this is going blinded, you can't really see it whatsoever. You reach back here, hopefully you guys have a good angle. You see the little clip that's smaller than your over the shoulder clip. This one's a little bit tougher. You gotta line it up right there and pull. And there it is, that's that, that's all together. So now you've got your sling on by yourself. It takes some time, takes some practice. The shoulder part is not too hard to get. The waist part takes a little bit of time since that clip, as you guys can see back here, is a little bit smaller than this guy right here. So when it comes to showering, guys, there are just simply some body parts you're not gonna be able to reach. You guys gotta accept that and move forward and just understand that, you know what, as time goes on, you get more flexibility back in the shoulder, more mobility, you'll be able to wash those places because if you're growing up like me, and you gotta plenty swing sometimes by yourself, you shirt on sometimes by yourself, or shower by yourself, then you got to do what you can do with what you got. And in this case, we have one working arm. So the hardest parts for me to reach are obviously my back. The top of this right shoulder, I mean, you can kind of do a little bit, but otherwise your left hand cannot reach it. Anything you can reach with your right arm is what you can wash, basically. That's the principle I'm gonna tell you guys. Otherwise, the left arm can't really do too, too much. All right, guys, this has been trick number three, I believe. Now let's go to trick number four, which is putting your shoes on, which I should have done before the sling because you do this without your sling on. But let's switch to that now. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for the dirtiness of my <laughs> floor and room in general. I do need to pick it up, there are no excuses. However, moving on to shoes, obviously make sure your shoes are untied. Now I'm gonna start with my left shoe, since it's my left arm that's injured and can't do too much and I'm using my right hand, so this is the hardest shoe to put on. Make sure they're untied. Make sure you guys choose a pair of shoes that are easy to kind of slide on. I got this pair of Skechers that I got it from a job. Recently working with Skechers. Simply as that, guys. Slide it on, make sure you're all good here. Now, what I suggest here is to lean forward with your chest to your knee, let your arm drape down without forcing it to drape down, and from here you can tie your shoes. And this is, again, guys, the second week where I don't have much pain. Maybe if you're in the first week, definitely get some help. I would highly hope that if you're in your first week after surgery, you have somebody there to help you with everything. Now, I will say, though, double knot your shoes. When you're able to tie your shoes, double knot your shoes, because if you're walking around later on and one of your shoes come un comes untied and you're in your sling, you're pretty much in bad shape until you can stop somewhere to take your sling off and tie them yourself, unless there's somebody around who's helpful enough to help you out. Now with this right one again, same thing as left. Make sure it's untied, make sure they're easy to slide on shoes. Slide that on, pull the tongue up, and again, lean forward, let the chest be there, lay your arm drape down, not pulling. Because even just then, when I barely kind of pulled back with my shoulder, I don't know if you guys caught that, there was definitely a pinch in my shoulder, so be very careful, guys. Tie it, definitely make sure to double knot it. Now you're good with your shoes. So guys, that's basically it. This is really an awkward angle, isn't it? But you got your socks, you got your shoes, you got your t-shirt, and your pants. I hope your underwear and pants, you guys can figure out yourself, you're adults, most of y'all. 
you can figure that out on your own. That's showering 101 for you guys. Whatever you can reach with your healthy hand is all you can really wash. And that's all my tips and tricks for you guys today. If you need any other tips and tricks or suggestions, ask down in the comment box below. With that being said, let's send it to Outdoor Jennings for the outro. Jennings, take it away. Thank you so much, Indoor Jennings. Now, guys, I really hope this video has been beneficial to you all in some way. I hope that the advice I've given, I hope that the tips and tricks I've given has been helpful and that you guys learned from my mistakes of not wearing my sling as often as I should, but my also, I think, good points of wearing ice all the time. I hope you learned some things, guys, that really helps make your recovery more comfortable and more bearable. Now, I want you all to have fun. I want you all to go out and be active, but please listen to what your doctor says. If you've got to chill out, for a couple days chill out speaking of which guys if you're active like me maybe y'all think well if i'm not doing my normal weightlifting and my normal cardio like i usually would when i'm not injured maybe i shouldn't eat as much no listen if you are on a clean diet or like i like to call it a clean lifestyle like i am keep eating what you're eating maybe bring the calories down a little bit but keep eating clean guys you need those nutrients to heal you need those nutrients while you're sleeping for your body to be as productive and efficient in the healing process as possible i will be uploading update videos every single week on how my my recovery is going remember my PT won't start for a little bit because I do have that bone fracture which has to heal before I start PT but I promise you guys as soon as PT does start I will bring you along for the ride if I'm allowed to to show you guys what they're having me do in order to get better faster that is it for me guys I hope you enjoyed this video I'm sorry about all the extra sounds I'm sorry about all the crazy lighting and the angles but you know what we do what we do I hope you guys found this video helpful Brow Rangers, I love you. Have a great rest of your week, and it is Friday. Get outside and enjoy the day. If you are recovering, God bless. I pray that you heal quickly, and I'll talk to you all next week or Sunday on the live stream. Much love, fam. Peace. Make sure you guys, you know, subscribe and click on the, uh, the last video if you guys didn't see the day of surgery and that first week after surgery. It's one of these, one of these two sides here. I'm just gonna sit here and pet this puppy. How could you guys be happier on a Friday after watching a video than seeing a puppy being pet? This is Jessie, she's a good girl. Subscribe, thanks for watching. Last video. I know what y'all are waiting for. This is getting awkward now guys, just subscribe or, you know, watch the last video. Anytime now. Bye guys.